Item number SCP-3998 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures SCP-3998 is to be contained in Secure Holding Locker 3998-1, SHL-3998-1. SHL-3998-1 is to be fireproofed, and vacuum sealed to prevent access to oxygen. SCP-3998 and SHL-3998-1 are scheduled for cleaning every day at 9 a.m. If any D-Class personnel spontaneously ignite, the seal to SCP-3998's containment locker must be inspected and repaired, replaced as necessary. For safety reasons, Site-34 must hold D-Class personnel, particularly those who have been convicted of first-degree murder charges and domestic abuse. If staff are found to have been targeted by SCP-3998, they are to be investigated and then processed. Description: SCP-3998 is a human cadaver, which expired late 17th century. SCP-3998 lacks any legs and is covered in extensive fourth-degree burns. Sometime after its death, SCP-3998 remains were collected and fashioned to a scarecrow, held together by wicker, nails, and wire. Along with its severe burns, SCP-3998 appears to have suffered blunt force trauma to multiple regions of its body. It is unclear if SCP-3998 died as a result from one of the two, or both. See Examination 3998-6. The object constantly exudes a flammable liquid from its bones, which is composed primarily of ethanol and human fat. Each night between 11 p.m. and 4 a.m., SCP-3998 ignites and is engulfed in flames. However, despite being highly flammable, SCP-3998 does not suffer any structural damage. When SCP-3998 is on fire, and when not contained properly, the nearest person who meets a certain criteria will also spontaneously ignite. SCP-3998 targets those who have killed or physically abused a romantic partner. If SCP-3998 is unable to ignite itself, SCP-3998 cannot ignite targets. Instead, those that would have been targeted only develop brief, mild pains to either their chest or to the back of their head. As targets are left burning, large quantities of boiling ethanol will appear in their stomach. This large influx of alcohol typically induces vomiting, which causes further external burns, and will often cause permanent nerve and organ damage if they survive the initial burning. Eventually, their body fat, particularly in the torso-stomach region, will begin to melt. The process is extremely rapid often causing massive internal damage if the target is successfully extinguished before they die of fourth-degree burns. If left to burn, the combination of melted fat and ethanol will cause the stomach to violently rupture, often bisecting the victim in the process. Those that SCP-3998 affects cannot be extinguished until SCP-3998 itself is also extinguished. SCP-3998 Documents the following are the partial set of documents and materials related to SCP-3998, as well as related correspondences and articles discovered on the property where SCP-3998 was originally found. These documents may only be viewed by staff with specialized 3998 clearance, the current Site-34 Administrator, and those with O5 designations. Forward. The following are excerpts found in contemporaneous journals from Salem that appear relevant to SCP-3998. Documentary evidence suggests a connection between SCP-3998 and one Candace Hayes, a 17th-century resident of Salem. Most were found in basements and attics of historic buildings located near the property SCP-3998 was found. Journal 1 Author, Mary 1682 We attended the wedding of Aidan Hayes and Candace. Candace seemed rather distraught. The lady's father went through all that work to see her married. It would be a shame if she did not appreciate it, especially with a sir as respected as Aiden Hayes. Journal 2 Author Mary 1683 Candace has been different. She used to keep her hair tied, but now she's keeping it too long. I see bruises on her often. She hath been looking for every excuse to be alone, just so she can win to the forest. Journal 3 Author Mary 1683 Something piqued my interest today. Margaret pointed to how Candace shies from her womanly duties lately, and I heard that she might be a bad wife, making Aiden angry. Bruises make sense now. Journal 4 Author Mary 1691 I was out washing the laundry, and I heard Candace shouting at her husband. 
I went out to ask the lady what was wrong, but she snapped at me, calling me nosy. The amount of disrespect and scorn the mistress is remarkable, though to be expected. I have half a mind to tell the rest of the women about this. Journal 5, Author, Mary 1692 I've been hearing some troubling things about Candace lately. Ever since she wed Aiden, she hath been wandering off more. Plus, I heard rumors that her interests do not lie with men. The devil must have a hold on her. Maybe Aiden will know what to do with that harlot. I shall tell him tomorrow. Interview 3998-0 Forward The following interview was taken on June 8, 1693 by Judge William Stoughton and the Constables of Salem. Interview has been edited from its original document for clarity. William Stoughton when presented with a warrant for thy arrest, thou fled immediately. Tis this, thy refusal to speak till thou have been branded, and thy husband's testimony that places thee under suspicion. What thou hast have to say in thy defense? Candace Hayes, I have no words for to. I shall not lie. The accusations are true. So you admit to being a witch? And you admit to consorting with an evil spirit? I do, although she is not evil in heart. What in the name of God would lead thee down such a path, to perform such detestable arts? They are not detestable. They would work for anyone, be they of God or Satan, or anyone and no one. They are merely a form of tool. You have not answered the question. Is it not obvious? I did not ask to marry, yet I was waved to a bastard in my father's church. He does not respect me. To him I am his property. Just as Lilith had done. That is the woman's place. Thou hast only to be a good wife to- Be silent. How could I be a good wife to a man I detest? I care only for Clovis, and I'll be damned if to be true with anyone but her. T'would be my dying wish to see that bastard on his knees, and treat as I have been. Clovis, is this the name of the devil that you conjured? It bewitched you. The mistress bewitched me, but not in the manner of thou mayst think. It does not matter. We have thy confession. A witch as brazen as you shall be burned at the stake. We will see how your Clovis treats you in hell. In the name of our Sovereign Lord and Lady, the King and Queen, may God have mercy on thy soul. So be it. Document 3998-3 To the people of this hamlet, an execution of a witch, on the tenth day of June, 1693. Aidan Hayes hath caught his wife Candace, consorting with the devil and one of his evil angels. The evil witch hath been justly convicted, and shall be put to death by burning. If ye are able, come to the center of town. We need good men willing to stand between Satan's horror and our young and women folk. Hayes, a honest, God-fearing man, and the victim of this witch, has requested to be the one to start to flame himself. Letter 3998-4 Dear Candace, if you are reading this, something hath gone wrong. D must be angry, confused, maybe depressed. You have sold your soul to me when you were young, and we've been together since. Now that you have died, this means your soul is mine now. But I don't want it. I want you. I'm sorry we were caught. I'm sorry for what was done to you over the years. I'm still here for you, even if I'm not here with you. So I have brought you back. They put you to the pyre, but I only needed the bones to make you yourself again. I had to remove thy flesh, and I couldn't save your legs. They were too far gone. I made do with what was around me. I reaped from the field and wrapped your bones in wicker. You shall have to find a replacement. Speaking of, I wish to tell you something you'll want to know. Your husband restocked the shelf with gin, and while you are flammable, fire will only make you stronger this time. You have the power to make him feel worse than what you have felt. Make him wish he could go to hell. You won't be hurt ever again. I love you, and farewell. Clovis Note. This letter was found in the cellar of the estate under a pillow. The letter was still sealed, and remained unopened. Document 3998-5 Forward. The following document is an excerpt from an urban legend website regarding an entity called the Wicker Witch. Given supporting evidence, this is hypothesized to be Candace Hayes. The Wicker Witch There was once a young woman who was wed to a man against her will. She hated the man, but obeyed her father's wishes for her to bear children for his church. An evil spirit saw this and came to her while she was out gathering in the woods. The succubus took her hand and told her, I can help you live the life you truly wish to live. You need only to toss this one aside in exchange. Will you take my soul? the woman asked. Yes, said the she-devil. 
Will I be rich, the woman said. You shall have power that money could not hope to provide, the spirit told her. Will I have a real love, the woman asked. The spirit paused. I do not know. The woman pondered the offer, and asked one more time, What shall you do with my soul? This surprised the devil, but it kept its composure. It told her, It will be consumed, nothing more, nothing less. The woman accepted, and met with the spirit every day for ten years and grew close. She brought the spirit berries and trinkets, and it brought her advice and its companionship. It answered her questions and taught her her magics. The woman became a witch, and she used her power to torment her husband the same way he tormented her. One day, her husband followed her and found her shaking the devil's tail. He quietly went back to the town and gathered up a mob. They tied her up to a stake, broke her legs, and hung her up like a scarecrow to burn. They dumped her body down the mountain, but the devil found her, to give back her soul. It wrapped her bones in reeds, and used the fire of her soul to keep her alive, but the fire consumed her, and she wanted her old husband to burn with her. In the middle of the night, she doused herself in her old husband's gin, and set herself ablaze once again. She dragged her husband out of bed and fell upon him. She burned his face, and with her thumb, dug his eyes out of his skull. She burned with him until his flesh melted to the floor, and the smell could be found all across Salem. She grabbed his legs, and pulled and pulled until they came loose, so that she could use them to walk again. Only one of them walked out of that burning house, and it was her. His body was never found. Some say that the husband futilely crawled out of the wreckage, looking for his missing legs. Others say that the witch took his body elsewhere, so that she could continue to torture him. But many more say that he's in a hell of the witch's own creation, burning over and over again, and bringing those like him down with him, punishing them forever. As for the witch herself, only one thing can be said for sure. The wicker witch lives. Examination 3998-6 Forward. Further examination of SCP-3998 revealed inconsistencies in bone structure position, suggesting the cadaver is not Candace Hayes as originally thought. Below is a medical report of the findings. Report of investigation by Site-34, Salem, Massachusetts. Decedent. Unknown. SCP-3998. Race. White. Sex male, age 32. Home address MWSD. Occupation unknown. Type of death Violent. Found dead. Suspicious, unusual, or unnatural. Investigation Agency SCPF Site 34 Department K. Description of body Unclothed. Eyes unknown. Hair black. Mustache black. Beard black. Weight 5 kg. Length 0.9 meters. Body temperature 30 degrees Celsius. Date and time. Marks and wounds. SCP-3998 has sustained severe damage to its ribs and skull, implying it was hit several times with a blunt object. Fourth degree burns can be found along its torso, arms, and skull. Damage around the eye sockets. Legs appear to have been amputated post mortem and are missing. Probable cause of death. Fourth degree burns or trauma to the skull. Manner of death, homicide. Addendum 3998-2 After SCP-3998 was contained, there was a noted increase in the number of murders per day in Massachusetts, increasing from 0.32 to 0.48. A large portion of these deaths are arson homicides, and the victims are known perpetrators of violent crimes. Victims appear covered in extensive fourth-degree burns, and are gutted from the chest to pelvis. Information on these murders could not be contained due to the corpses being discovered in public displays and being attributed to the Wicker Witch. The public has been led to believe that the perpetrator of these killings is a serial killer using the Wicker Witch legend as an inspiration. Classification to Euclid pending on the capture and containment of the person responsible.